So hello, today I'm at Wooden Water Hall in Essex, which is just outside Wooden Water. And I'd like to talk to you about the history of the hall and the people connected to it. Now, Wooden Water itself, the village, is three miles from Malden in Essex. And the village was first recorded as Woodham in 875, around the time of the Danish Viking invasions of the coast here. And Woodham meant village in the wood. Now the modern name derives from the Fitzwalter family who were connected to this area. Now during the Saxon period there was one manor here and it's exactly where we stand now. And there was a fane and he was the Saxon fane was called Leofeva. By 1086 the Normans had replaced Leofeva with Feardric. Fier Pontel and we had a Ralph Baynard who was tenant-in-chief the most powerful man of this area now the Saxon manor house stood half a mile from the church which stands today called St Michael's the Archangel which is just outside Wooden Water Village now Wooden Water Hall, I believe, would, would have replaced the original Saxon manor and the moat is still here but the, um, the hall, the manor house is long gone but there are some uh, remains of the walls which I'm going to show you in a minute. There was also a church here from around the 12th century and that's also been dismantled. But I can also show you some of the original parts of the church. So if we go to the Fitzwalters, a fascinating family. We have a Robert Fitzwalter who was born right here, literally metres from where I stand in this hall, in 1182. His descendants were connected or related to Henry II and the Normans. He, would, he himself would become the leader of the Barons' Revolt. against King John and he was a signer of the Magna Carta in 1215 and he was also said to be the leader of the barons. I think there were 25 of them. He was an immensely powerful man. Three years later he would go on to a, a fifth on the fifth crusade to Egypt with the Knights Hospitallers and he was described as one of the greatest men in England and one of the most powerful. And on the 27th of December 1207, Robert Fitzwalter would marry his second wife right here, Rohisa de Baynard, and she was obviously related to the first tenant-in-chief here when the Normans took over. And this would, they would have been married right here where we stand. Now, Robert Fitzwalter would go on to donate Wooden Walter's original church to the Order of the Knights Hospitalia. And I would like to think that after battling us alongside them on crusade at a place called De Deometa in Egypt, which was the opening to the River Nile. This was in the years 1218 and 1219. And I would believe that he would have made his mind up there and then to do so, to donate the church. Now in 1237, the next fixed water was Sir Walter. And he would go on to enlarge a deer park here, which was described at the time as a great deer park and a separate red deer park. And it would remain with the Fitzwalters for generations until 1431 when the mail line ended. Now from, from here the Radcliffe family would take over until a John Radcliffe was treasonous against Henry VII who was the father of Henry VIII and he was swiftly beheaded. Now nine years later his family were forgiven and his son John, uh, sorry his son was called Thomas, he would be made uh, a Viscount Fitzwalter and in 1542 he was made Earl of Essex. 
and the sorry the earls sorry not Essex earls of Sussex and they were heavily involved in this region the earls of Sussex now by the time of the fourth the, four, the fourth earl of Sussex the family had fallen into debt and Wooden Water Hall which would have been here was then <clears throat> on lease to a man called Sir William Fitch and this was in 1638 now by the end of that century the old hall was all but demolished and by the 19th century the the, the estate itself was split up now we can thank Thomas Radcliffe Earl of Sussex for on the 26th of June 1562 he obtained a license from Elizabeth I to build the church that we see today outside of Wood and Walter. Now we're going to look around and I shall show you what evidence is left. So if we start with the top section which would have been where the hall and the church would have stood it would have been right here. Now you can see the terrain goes quite forward for quite a distance and the ditch or the moat would have gone around this boundary here and continued behind us. If I go down here I can show you how steep the ditch is. So if you look at the base of that tree that's more or less the bottom and we're probably level with up here so I guess that's about 20-30 feet down and the ditch runs or the moat runs all the way around so I believe this is the original Saxon moat So where exactly the church was, not sure, but it's possible it was in this area. Now, just walking down here, I did find these stones, which are from the church period. And as we walk further down, we've got what looks like part of the wall you can see obviously the tree has nature's taken over isn't that fantastic so it's all wrapped around there taken over the old oak tree and then on this side so now where I'm standing there would have been the, the wall would have continued it's uh, been long dismantled over the centuries but you can see remnants of it everywhere Now we're going to follow the boundary. If you look down here, this is a medieval tile. Now online, this area, this, this structure is dated between the earliest parts of 13th, 14th century. Now if you look at this, you can see a fingerprint there. That's the peg hole. It looks like there was a, some, another peg hole, which I've not seen before. So that would have laid like this that's probably from the 13th 14th centuries oh, ouch, that and then you can see the wall there there so it's continuing so we're basically walking uh, we're basically on the boundary of the wall there's a Tudor period wall or Possibly, even more recent, could even be Georgian. Again, you can see, looks like Tudor brick. And it's quite 
tidy in construction so I guess this would have been the last addition to this by the Earls of Sussex I guess this would have been their work you can see it goes up there and this is the, the, the ditch that goes up like this I like the way the way nature takes over everything. Now, bear with me. I've still got my shorts on. Braving the stinging nettles. Look at them big ones. This time of year, they're particularly nasty. Underneath the little needles. I'll give you a little trick, I wouldn't recommend it, but you can actually eat stinging nettles raw but you have to roll them up make sure right, let's, make sure you roll them up properly on your fingers otherwise you get stung but they're full of vitamin C so here we have which is most likely the 13th, 14th century stonework you can see it's quite crude now you can see over the centuries various parts have been added now when I talked about Roman this is indeed a Roman brick. It's about one and three quarters thick on average. And when I'm talking of the, the different structures, let me go round to the other end and I'll show you. So if I stand at the base here, I'm six foot two, this is about 10 foot tall. So we shall, this is the corner and you can see then it goes off to where we were just a minute ago on the top we were just stood around there. Now when I'm talking about church material we're looking for stone like this and this and even more up there. So that is definitely from the original church. And there's a big block there. And there. And here. Now I've got a feeling that the church may well have been here. It's a hunch. And the reason I say that, and there you go, look, there's a piece of church stonework there. Just sitting there. Now, if you look at the base of this, see, and that's even got some carvings in it. See, that's fluted. That could well be part of the pillar. So, I believe this is the original church wall. I have a feeling. And then it's been built on top of. And they've used parts of the church. And everywhere you look, you can see stonework from it here, here, there, 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 it's all over the place. And also in churches they use something called clunch, which is like a, a very soft chalk. And there's a bit of clunch there. So the masons can easily carve this, this is just a basically a hard chalk. And you can see more of it there and I did at one point think this might have been 
the wall because it's quite squared off. I'm not sure. And you can see more stonework here. So the original church was definitely here. Now, I'd like to read you out a little bit about Queen Mary. I found this quite interesting. So Queen Mary Tudor was actually here at Wooden Water Hall. Henry VIII died in 1547 and he was succeeded by the child king Edward VI. Edward VI was also into banning the traditional Catholic practices. His half-sister Mary followed the Catholic faith with vigour after her ma mother Catherine of Aragon. Now, Catherine of Aragon was Henry VIII's first wife. Now abroad Mary was well connected to the Roman Emperor Charles V and she planned to flee to the Netherlands and then return as head of an invading army to England. In April 1550 Mary had taken residence with the Fitzwalter family here in Wood and Water. So this is where Mary would have been. Now its location here was very close to, was key, and it was close to the Blackwater Estuary of Malden and escaped to Netherlands. Now on the 30th of June 1550, three Imperial Dutch warships waited in darkness off the coast of Malden, and John de Bois was a royal secretary from the Netherlands who was sent here. And he met, met Princess Mary right here. Now de Bois posed as a grain merchant at the time to not arouse suspicion and the alpha was there the ships were waiting and Mary herself hesitated she was after all Henry VIII's daughter and she would be abdicating so Dubois returned empty-handed and three years later young Edward VI was dead he was only 15 and he died of pneumonia. Now Mary would become queen and she gained the unofficial title of Bloody Mary for she oversaw the deaths of 300 religious dissenters. So on that night at Wood and Walter Hall, Mary's decision changed the course of history. For if she had taken the boat in Malden, Lady Jane Grey would have become Queen of England. And as it turned out, nine days after becoming Queen Mary, Lady Jane Grey was beheaded, aged 16. So, I hope you enjoyed that. And I shall attempt to get up, actually. show you the bottom of the ditch there anyway I hope you enjoyed that thank you very much